afternoon or good evening. Welcome to the Downtown Vineyard Church online service. If this is your first time joining us, I just want to say thank you so much for letting us into your home and preach the gospel. Here in a moment, we're going to worship the Lord together. My name is Jesse. I get the pleasure of leading worship here. And I want you to know that wherever you're at and whoever you're with, we're together right now. So if you're able to, stand, crank up your volume, and let's worship the Lord together.
Good morning and welcome to the Downtown Vineyard Church. Whether this is your first time joining us online or you've been attending for years, we're so happy that we get to worship together this morning. If I haven't met you, my name is Missy McPhail. My husband Kevin and I are the children's pastors here. And you know, I was reflecting this morning just on the kind of week we had. And if you're like me, this has been a week with a lot of changes in our routines and in our normal rhythms in life that really were beyond a lot of our control, but I'm so grateful that while our routines may have been a little chaotic, that we still have the spiritual rhythms in our lives. We still have our personal rhythms of connecting with Jesus through scripture and prayer and our community rhythms of worshiping together. So today, as we prepare to worship together, I wanted to invite you to gather a few things, get some grape juice and some bread and or crackers if you have them maybe get a candle, and maybe your cell phone or a computer, because as we worship together today, even though we're online, we're going to continue some of the regular rhythms that we do together. 1 Corinthians 11.25 says this, as often as you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. So whether it's just you and Jesus sitting on your couch today, or whether you're with your family in your living room, I invite you to take some juice, take Take some bread and take a moment to remember Christ's sacrifice for us. And then also, I would invite you to light a candle. James 5.16 says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And each week, one of our rhythms of worship here at DTV is lighting a candle just as a symbol, a symbol of the prayers and the desires that we're carrying in our hearts. So we invite you today to do that at home. Continue that rhythm of worship that we do together each week and light a candle just as a symbol of the things you're asking Jesus for. And then also, I invite you to continue the rhythm of worshiping by giving your tithes and offerings. There's several ways you can do that. You can text your gift to 84321. If you'd like, you can also give by by, um, going to our website, dtvchurch.org, or through our app. And you can also set up direct deposit through your bank. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7 says, Whoever sows generously will reap generously, and whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. So we invite you today to continue in these rhythms of worship. In a time where we can't control a lot, we can choose to worship together through in these ways. So let's pray and continue to worship. Jesus, we thank you that you are steady, that you remain the same through every season, God. We thank you that you are with us. Lord, this morning we just come together and take a deep breath. We invite you to come, to come and fill our homes, fill our hearts. And Jesus, we ask that you would come and your peace would rule and reign today. We worship you and we thank you for who you are and your presence in our lives. In your name we pray. Let's worship together.
God, we lift you up this morning. We sing your praises because we know that we are going to see a victory. We know that these battles are already won before they even started. And you have our back in every firefight. We lift up this service to you, God. We lift up our community, our leaders, our schools, and the churches around the valley and the world. It's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen. Here's just a moment. We're going to continue our service. Before you do, take 30 seconds or so and uh, just let us know that you're here and say hi to one another. Well, good morning. We're so glad to worship with you this morning. If I haven't met you, my name is Missy McPhail. My husband Kevin and I are the children's pastors here, and we're so glad that you chose to log in with us today. So I just wanted to do a couple of announcements for you. In just a moment, Pastor Paul will be continuing our sermon series on the kingdom of God. But before we do that, I wanted to take a second just to remind you about our Connect card. So in this season, more than ever, we're we're asking you, please take a moment to go ahead and go online and fill out those Connect cards. So you can do that on our app if you have a smartphone, or you can go to our church website at dtvchurch.org. So take a second, log on there. If you have a prayer request, this is a great way to communicate to us, and our pastors will be in touch with you very soon to pray for you. We also have an opportunity for you to just tell us a little bit about what's been happening in your life. We miss you. We miss seeing you each week. Kevin and I, I know, miss seeing your kids, and we'd love to hear something funny that you guys did this week or how you're adapting to new changes in schedule and routine. So take a second, fill those out, update your um, contact information so we can stay in touch with you and do that online. You can also mark your next step. So we fully expect that as we worship together today and as Pastor Paul teaches in a few moments, that you will hear from God. We believe that he will put things on your heart to help you take your personal next step towards him. So please take a moment and fill those out. So we also have just a few announcements I wanted to share with you today. As you know, events have been postponed, but we do have some volunteer opportunities available. So if you go to our website, you can see some more details. There's a place to join a group that you're interested in. And then as opportunities become available, they'll be posted in your group and you'll get an email with all those details. Also, you have several ways you can connect with us on Facebook each day, each day at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. We have check-ins with one of our DTV pastors. We'll read scripture together and pray, and it's a great time of encouragement. So join us at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. at our DTV Facebook page. We also have an opportunity for you to connect with our pastors at noon for plug-in with a pastor. There's different things happening each day, so we encourage you to join us at noon as well. So 8 a.m., 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. There's something for you to do with your DTV team here at, on Facebook. And then also, we do still have food distribution on April 13th, and we need some volunteers to come and serve our community from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. This time, it'll be a little different. We will have a drive through Those picking up the food will remain in their cars, and our volunteers will deliver the food to their cars this time. So if you'd like to help us with this, go to our website, dtvchurch.org, and sign up. We'd love to have you come that night and help us take care of those in our community that could use a little extra food during this time. So if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to your neighborhood pastor. If you haven't heard from your neighborhood pastor this week, please let us know on, you know, you guessed it, the connect card. Fill that out and let us know and we'll be in touch. Kevin and I are the neighborhood pastors for the Fruta area. So we're looking forward to connecting with you this week and through the coming weeks. All right, thanks so much. We're so glad that you're that to be together today. Check out this video and have a blessed week. So how God's been working in my life during this time is he's really been asking me a question. And that question is, what would it look like if I trusted in him in every aspect of my life? Now, before I became a Christian, I was a disaster. I remember going to church that night and saying, Lord, 
I don't have much, but here's my life. See if there's anything you can do with it. And it's easy for me to trust him with my salvation. It's easy for me to tr know that he is Lord of all. But in the day to day, it's either held on to things or I've taken them back. And I say, don't worry, God, I've got these things. And there's going to come a time where we get out of our houses and we come in contact with the world who now has the reality that the things that they trust in and the things that they hope in can be taken away like that. You know, the early church was persecuted. They were torn limb from limb and they were martyred. And they'd say to their onlookers, have faith, have hope. And they would see that the Christians had hope in something that transcended their circumstances to the extent that Tertullian said that the blood of the martyrs is like seed. And Christianity continued to grow through those times that they were being persecuted. And we are that hope through Christ to this world. So God's asking me, what would it look like if I trusted? What are those areas that I'm not trusting in him? Because when we get out of this house, our houses, we're going to be able to show that there is a hope that transcends all circumstances, all understanding. So for me, this has really given me the opportunity to reflect on one of those areas that I'm not trusting in him. And just taking the time to rest and reflect and really renew that, that love and that trust in him. Good morning, DTV Church. How are you guys doing? What a difference a few days makes. I'm, I'm amazed this week. Um, I, I think I've made over probably 150 phone calls this week. And I'm amazed at how circumstances change perspectives. Just a few weeks ago, I had made this big commitment for Lent that I was going to give up Facebook. And now I am using Facebook every day. I'm using it in a brand new way. I, instead of just looking on it and spending hours on it and going back to it and scrolling up and just looking and looking and looking, I, I'm now using it in a new way. I'm using it in a way to, um, to encourage people's faith and help promote our services. And really, it's amazing how perspectives change. Just a few days ago, I was actually tired of social media. I had, I had decided that I was done. I was going to take a break from social media. And now, today, I can't tell you how grateful I am for the social media platform and the amount of people I see on there encouraging each other's faith. Uh, another perspective change that, that I've had in the past couple weeks is a couple of weeks ago, if you would have told me, hey, in just a short while, you're going to be a TV evangelist and there's literally going to be nobody inside your church, I would have said, you're crazy. And now I am one. It's amazing. It's amazing how circumstances change your perspective. Over the past couple of days, I've had this realization. The realization is that we are all carriers of something. And before you kind of play that out too far and, and kind of maybe take that, maybe we're someplace I'm not. Before we had shelter in place, before any of us had heard the word coronavirus, we were all carrying something. Some people, I'm amazed at the amount of optimism they carry. I've called hundreds of people over the past week. And I can't even tell you how many conversations that went, hey, Pastor Paul, man, we're doing great. Man, we really trust God's on the throne. God's got us. And they're not just saying it. It's not just words. It truly is an optimism that comes well deep, deep, deep within their soul. I've encountered other people who right now, they're just carrying fear. I'm really not saying that in a negative way, whether you like, like, you know, you're a good Christian if you don't have fear and you're a good, better Christian if you have optimism. I'm really not saying that at all. I'm saying that our current circumstances has caused an anxiousness 
inside people's souls. As a matter of fact, it's caused people to be so anxious that we've seen the stock market crash in a way that we have never seen in our lifetime. We've seen people lose jobs and employers have to lay off employees. And I had, have had conversation after conversation with employers who were like, man, today was the hardest day of my life. Today I had to lay off X amount of employees. I had to make decisions that I didn't think I would have to make a month ago. You see, there's some scriptures that I want to talk about even before I get started today. That even before we begin to record this service, I was just prompted by a couple scriptures that, that talk about hope and that talks about love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, there's three things that will last forever. Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. I love that passage. You're not going to find it in my notes. You're not going to find it in my slides. But I love that passage because what it really says is that fear won't last forever. But faith, hope, and love will. Faith, hope, and love will endure all things, all circumstances, all time. Faith, hope, and love. I think about another passage. It's in, it's in um, Philippians chapter um, 4, verses 6 through 9. It's Paul, and he's, char- starting to, he's talking to the church of Corinth. And he says, I said he's talking to the church of Corinth, but we're actually in Philippians, so he's tra- talking to the church of Philippi. Did you see me catch that? You see me catch that? It's Paul, and he's talking to the church of Philippi, and he's saying this. He's saying, don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can even understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. He says, what if you fixed your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable? What if you would think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise? Keep putting into practice all you've learned from me and everything you've heard and seen me do. Then the peace of God will be with you. You see, this morning as we begin, that's my hope. My hope is that you are full of the peace of God. There's another passage. Let me give you one more passage this morning before we start. Romans chapter 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all of his joy and his peace as you trust him. But he doesn't just stop there. He says, so that you trust in him, and then there's a comma, and it says, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We started this series a couple weeks ago. It's called the kingdom of God. It's really an idea about who the vineyard is and how the vineyard operates. I I had no idea that when we laid out this series how important this series would be to our church. You see, in the vineyard, in the vineyard, we place our full hope, faith, and love in Jesus. And, And I believe this. I believe that you and I have an opportunity right now that we've never seen in our lifetime. I believe that you and I have an opportunity, and it goes beyond being a believer in Jesus. And it goes beyond being a good neighbor. It it actually has more to do with how you perceive who God is in his nature. So I want to ask this question even as we begin. Are you filled with hope? Are you filled with joy? Are you filled with peace? Do you have faith, hope, and love? Is your faith worth catching? Is your hope encouraging? Is your love infectious? You see, one of the values of the vineyard, one of the, one of the Wimber-isms that we've been talking about over the past four weeks 
is this idea in the vineyard that we believe everyone gets to play. We have this saying, it's probably my favorite saying, it's probably the saying that got me into the vineyard as a young man. And it's just simply this, everyone gets to play. You see, if you would have known me when I was 19 years of age, I'm not sure if you would have actually liked me at 19 years of age. I was young, I was cocky, I had I'd made a, a punch, bunch of poor choices. And the very first time I walked into a vineyard church, I recognized there was something different in the church that I had walked into than maybe the church that I'd grown up in, and I loved the church that I'd grown up in. But there is this genuineness about the Holy Spirit and the way that people sought the Holy Spirit and the way that people treated each other that blew my mind. We had attended about two or three services, my wife and I. We were young. I was 19, she was 17. We were parents at that point in time of our life. I was unemployed and I had three and a half years of probation that I was doing for some choices that I had made. I I really enjoyed the church that we were going to. It was off of 57th and Sheridan. It was in an old liquor store and they had not even put up a new vineyard church sign. It literally said liquor store. And one evening after worship, before the pastor got up to teach, this guy came walking over to me and he looked at me in the eyes and he said, he said, man, I've been watching you and I really think that you're supposed to be working with our kids. I, I couldn't believe that he was saying this. Um, he didn't know anything about me and I actually didn't want him to know anything about me at that time. I was ashamed of the person that I was and I didn't feel like I belonged in a church. As a matter of fact, Being in a church was probably the furthest thing from my mind at that moment. I had hope that God could do a work in my life, but at that moment, my life was far from Christ. And I looked at him and I said, hey man, if anybody should work with your kids, it shouldn't be me. And he looked at me and he said, he said, well, would you give me one good reason why you couldn't work with our kids? And I looked at him and I said, sir, I've got so much baggage, it's not even funny. You would not want me working with your kids. And one of the greatest things that happened in my life on that day was he put his arm around me. And as he put his arm around me, he looked at me in the eyes and he said, young man, he said, don't you know that in the vineyard, everybody has baggage and everyone gets to play. You see, the reason this is so important for today is this, I believe that in this circumstance, when we're in uh, shelter in place, I believe that you have a great opportunity to play in the kingdom of God. I believe that you have a great opportunity to be a reflection of Jesus in a way that you wouldn't have gotten two weeks ago, three weeks ago. You see, in the vineyard, not only do we believe that everyone gets to play, but we believe every person is a pastor. We believe every member is a minister. You see, you don't have to go to a priest. You don't have to call your pastor every time you want to have a conversation about Jesus with a friend or a neighbor. That you are the person that God has empowered and has given you his Holy Spirit to encounter others. There's this passage in 1 Peter 2.9. It says, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest. You are a holy nation. God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. You see, I believe right now our church is perfectly positioned to be the church that our community needs. To be the church members, the Christians that our families need. There's this other passage in Matthew chapter five. I've actually been reading it a lot the past couple weeks. I've shared it on Facebook when we do our eight and eights. Every every Monday or every morning, we have a a pastor who goes online at eight o'clock in the morning and he reads some passages and he prays 
over the day. And then at 8 p.m., he closes the day by going back to that passage and reflecting on it and praying over our friends and over our families. It's been unbelievably powerful. Lots of you have joined in. But this passage has come up for me all week long. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is talking to the crowd, and he says, don't you know that you are the salt of the earth? And he says, but what good is salt if it loses its flavor? He's literally saying that you're the salt of the earth, and, and it's so important that you maintain your relationship to the Father. He says, you can't make it salty again. It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot. And then he goes on to say in verse 14, But you're the light of the world. You're like a city on a hilltop that can't be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In verse 16, he says, And in the same way, and in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. I love that. This idea in the vineyard that everyone gets to play because you're a royal priesthood, that you're the salt of the earth, you're the light of the world, you're the hope that your neighbors need, you're the hope that your family needs. You see, when you resonate who Jesus is in you, you'll become the hope that they need. I think this is super interesting, though, because as Christians, we're not automatically hope, as we all know that, that there's, pre, there, there's a lot of Christians, you probably even know some, hopefully you've never been one, but there's a lot of Christians that don't handle their hope very well. As a matter of fact, when, when things begin to fall apart, they begin to fall apart. And so you only become hope based upon how you handle your hardships. I'm not saying that to discourage anyone. I, I know that these are tough times. I know that there's a lot of people who are real discouraged lately. But I want you to, today, make a commitment to gather your hope back up. Because you can only be hope based upon how you handle your hardships. You know, like in these moments, if you freak out and cuss people out, it will be hard for you to help people out. You see, I think it really is a great question that we're all carriers of something. And so you want to ask the question, is your faith worth catching? Is your faith contagious? You see, in, in these days and in these times, it could be really easy to hide out in our homes or to hoard up in our homes or to hold up in our homes. It could be really easy to buy a whole bunch of stuff and share it with nobody. But it also could be really easy to make your home a place that offers help. And I, I know we're in shelter in place and I know we're not interacting with other people and having people into our homes, but you literally could take your home and you could go on Facebook and you could reach out to your friends and you could do a Zoom call or you could do some type of meeting online where you just call your friends and your family and say, hey, I just want to pray for you. I just want to talk and see how you're doing. You could literally use your home as a place where once or twice a day you set time aside to pray for your family, to pray for your friends. You could literally use your home as a place where you reach out and you help out. And you help people heal because you're the hope the world needs today. You're the hope the world needs today. And in the vineyard, everyone gets to play. Your home's a sanctuary. And when we say the words that everyone gets to play, what we actually mean is everyone must play. This isn't a time to be on the sidelines. This isn't a time to be a watcher and just watch services online. This is the time to use the gifts that God has given you and use the resources that God has given you to make an impact in the kingdom of God. 
You know, sometimes whenever you hear a message like this, you might say things in your head like, but Paul, you don't understand. And the, the answer to that question would be, I do understand because at 19 years of age, I wasn't anything close to the person that I thought I should be. I had made choices that had me not only far from God, but had me far from being a, a person that really should be in any type of leadership. And what I didn't understand at that time was that my past didn't eliminate me. My past actually qualified me because I had repented of my past. And I was now using my life to honor God. John Wimber, one of my favorite sayings about John, is he used to say, never trust anyone without a limp. That in the vineyard, we, you never trust anyone without a limp because the truth is we're all fallen. We've all fallen short of the glorious standards of God, as Romans 3 says. You see, here's the second thing that I love about the vineyard. Here's the second thing that I think is so important to the kingdom of God. That in the kingdom of God, everyone has a purpose and everyone has a place. Because in the vineyard, we're not exclusive, we're inclusive. We believe that people were made by God and in his image. We believe that relationships are holy. We believe that we need each other. That we need each other in these times. And we believe that everyone's called to be a pastor in some way. There's this famous passage that was written by Paul. He wrote these, this passage to help people understand how important the body of Christ is. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 27, he, he's, he's talking about the body and how important it is and how important it is that you're a part of it and that I'm a part of it. And he says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. He says, we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether you were Jew or Gentile, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink and even so the body is not made up of one part but of many parts. Verse 15. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I don't belong, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if an ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. He's literally saying that whatever your excuse is, that you're still a bar part of the body of Christ. You might look up and say, yeah, but man, I, I can't speak like you, or man, I, I, I can't play a guitar, or man, I, I'm just not really wired for children's ministry, which we know that everybody's wired for children's ministry. He said, if the whole body were an eye, in verse 17, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there's many parts, but there's one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the hand cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving great honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers. If one part is honored, we all rejoice with it. Now the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. You see, he's making this point that we need you in the body of Christ. We need you using your gifts to serve others. You see, in the kingdom of God, there are no unimportant people, and there are no unimportant positions. As a matter of fact, you've probably figured this out already, that 
We need each other serving one another. I'm so proud of our church. I'm so proud of the vineyard churches in this valley. We've all rallied around Food Bank of the Rockies. And we're beginning to um, build boxes and, and give food out and food distribution out. We, we've rallied around hospitals and you can go online and you can find ways to make masks so that hospitals can begin to have more and more masks. We reached out to the local hospitals and we said, what is your need? And they said, could your body of Christ, could your church make masks? We said, we can do that. We're currently working on a new plan that we'll be talking through next week about how we can come alongside healthcare workers and, and those that are right now spending hours upon hours of caring for others in need. And we, we also know that in this time that as finances get tough, we know that some of you are going to have to pull back. We know that. I totally get that. We know that people have been laid off. We know that jobs have taken a hit. But we know that some of you have been unbelievably blessed. That God has blessed you and, and you're actually working more and you actually are making more during this time. And we're saying, what if you would help out those that are hurting? What if you would make an extra offering gift? Or what if you would uh, make a, a donation to a great organization that's, that, that needs a little more help? You see, we all know that all of our gifts can help someone. Isn't it amazing how a few days have changed our perspective? Delivery people are now some of the most important people in our community. I love that. Cleaning companies, now all of a sudden, that they've gone from behind the scenes to right up front. Truck drivers and grocery store workers. As a matter of fact, teachers have become more important in this time. I, I was on Facebook this week and I was reading some of the comments that parents have made about uh, homeschooling their children. And I saw one that said, we've been doing this for two days and one's already suspended and the other one's already expelled. I saw another um, one that said, my neighbor is outside uh, scraping off the terrific kid on board bumper sticker. And then I read a post from an eight-year-old little boy named Ben. And he wrote in his home school journey, journal, he said, it's not going good. My mom's getting stressed out. My mom's really getting confused. We took a break so my mom could figure things out. And then he wrote, dot, dot, dot. I'm telling you, it's not going good. You see, everyone has a place. And everyone has a purpose. And everyone's important. And finally, here's the last thing that I want you to think about this morning. In the kingdom of God, we are called to spread Faith, hope, and love, not fear. Now, now I'm telling you, I, I totally understand if your heart's full of anxiety. I totally get that. I, I totally get that in this time of uncertainty, that it messes with heads and hearts. But I'm saying that in the kingdom of God, that our center place is Jesus, and we can trust him. We can choose faith, hope, and love above fear. We can choose to love people by protecting people and, and keeping a safe distance from people during this time. We can choose to uh, engage with our community through online Bible studies and online meetings. We can choose to offer hope through prayer. We could even maybe go out inside and put a sign in our, in our yard that says, this house is full of hope. You know, the other day, my wife and I spent hours on the phone making phone calls. And when we were done, we said, we need to go for a walk. And so we walked around our block. We have this little route we take. It's about eight blocks. It doesn't take very long, about 10, 12 minutes. And as we came back to our house, there was a bag on our door with a beautifully written note on it and a gift inside. And it just simply said, Paul and Linnea, Thank you for the phone call. It came at a very important time. You see, what they offered us was faith, hope, and love. And what we offered them was faith, hope, and love. Matthew 5, 
You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. And then Peter wrote these words. And finally, all of you should be of one mind. You should sympathize with each other. You should love each other as brothers and sisters. And you should be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with blessings. That's what God's called you to do. And then he will grant you many blessings. So let me just ask you this question. Today, is your faith worth catching? Is your hope encouraging? And is your love infectious? Let me pray for us today. Lord, we just want to come before you. And we want you to know that we love you. We love you. We love you that we can come before you and with all of our anxious thoughts and with all of our fears, the Lord, that we can lay them before you and that you can fill our hearts with hope. And you can fill our hearts with encouragement. And you can fill our hearts with love for others. Lord, we pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, we thank you that in your kingdom, everyone has a place and everyone has a purpose. And everyone gets to play. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Today, if you're with us and you have a prayer request, please go online, please fill out a prayer card. We're, we're calling people just like every day. We're texting people just like every day. If, if you want to give, you can give online. We encourage you to continue to reach out and find ways to serve your neighbors. We love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Send your spirit